Whether you're brand new to reloading or a seasoned veteran, there's a good chance that you already have or are going to make one of these mistakes when you're sizing brass. Today, I'm going to cover at least five mistakes, probably more, that you can make during your brass sizing process, how to identify them, and hopefully keep them from happening again. Some of these I have made myself and others I have heard from folks that watch the channel. If I miss something, feel free to add it in the comments section below. One of the very first mistakes I made as a reloader was taking some brand new brass and a very clean brand new die and absolutely smashing the neck and shoulder of the case. There are actually two things that can cause this particular issue to occur. The first, and was my case, was the neck of the case had absolutely no lube and there was no residual lube left from previously using the die. So the expander ball was perfectly clean and when it entered the neck, it just crushed it. Another possibility that can cause the neck to look like this is having the expander ball adjusted too high into the portion of the die that sizes the neck. Having just a little lube and having your expander adjusted correctly should keep this from happening to you. If you have any questions on how to adjust this, check with your die manufacturer. Most have online manuals, just like this Forrester manual, that can help you adjust it properly. Another easy mistake around case lube is lubing the cases themselves. While I've certainly heard of folks who claim to have never stuck a case, I am certainly not on that list. You can certainly have too much lube, but having not enough can make your reloading experience go downhill pretty fast. Having a stuck case remover, even if you never have to use it, may save your reloading session or keep Murphy's Law from striking at all. Either way, I have a stuck case remover on my bench. The next couple issues we're going to go over all involve decapping pins. Any more, I decap on brass in a separate step. But even if you're doing this, there's a possibility of making an error. The first oops here is attempting to decap burden primed cases. Most of us are used to boxer prime cases, but calibers like 762 by 39 as well as a few others, burden prime cases are not uncommon. Attempting to decap this brass with too much force is a quick step to a broken decapping pin. While it's not impossible to decap this brass, it is not done with the same dies that you use to decap boxer primed cases. If a piece of brass is giving you fits, take a quick look with a flashlight before you end up wrecking your decapping pin or your die. The next oops that involves decapping pins is forcing your standard decapping pin through a small flash hole. These smaller flash holes are sometimes referred to as palma pockets, but these can be found in places like Small Rifle Primer 308 brass, Small Rifle Primer 6.5 Creedmoor brass, and I also believe some PPC cases use this smaller flash hole. The spec on that smaller flash hole is in the ballpark of around 59 thousandths, where regular flash holes are typically around 80 thousandths. Some die sets like the Forrester 6.5 Creedmoor die set have a pin that works just fine for either. Other manufacturers may not, and you may need to remove the decapping pin from your sizing die and use a separate decapping die like this one from Redding that is meant to handle smaller flash hole brass. Knowing the size of your decapping pin should be as easy as measuring it with a pair of calipers, and if you're sizing brass and it doesn't feel right, look more carefully before you end up wrecking those beautiful flash holes. The next oops I want to cover is for those of you thinking about using expander mandrels instead of stock die expanders. Screwing these down too far can cause damage to the neck and or the shoulder of your case. Making sure the height of the die relative to the case you're reloading is very important. Nothing hurts more than botting out a piece of brass against the top of the expander and damaging your cases. Another sizing mistake that might not be quite as obvious is oversizing the case during the sizing process. Some die manufacturer's instructions will have you tighten your sizing die all the way to the shell holder and then add a quarter turn. In some instances, this setting can push your shoulder back way too far. Having headspace comparators and knowing how much you're pushing that shoulder back is the best way to size your brass. Improper sizing can cause everything from shortened case life, inconsistent ignition, all the way to case head failure. A full length size bumping the shoulder back two to three thousandths should be a good setting for optimal performance and case life. The ones from Short Action Customs are very nice, but if your budget is a little smaller, the ones from Hornady are certainly better than nothing at all. I probably should mention this as well, even though it's not specific to case sizing, that chamfering and deburring your case necks is an important step to keep copper from being shaved from your projectiles, as well as for proper feeding. Something else worth mentioning is choosing the wrong die to size your brass. If you choose to neck size your brass, I guess that's your decision. However, not for an auto loader, unless you particularly enjoy clearing jams. Knowing what die is best for your application is important, so check out this video right here where I cover all the different sizing dies and how they compare. Thank you so much for watching and until next week, stay safe in small groups.